so it is Seasons Pass Holder Preview Day here at Canada's Wonderland. I'm here on my own today. It is still late April, which is a little early for a Canadian amusement park to open, unless you're located in Europe. But you don't have Canadian amusement parks in Europe. Uh, so it's basically a dry run for the staff. I just finished my first ride of the year on Leviathan, and now I'm at the aptly named Wildebeest, with an E in wild. Okay, so I uh, just got off of Wildebeest, first ride of the year. I have to say, personal uh, opinion of this ride, yes, it's a rough one. It is probably uh, one of the roughest coasters in the park, but it is also has a special place in my heart. Uh, it's actually my favorite wooden roller coaster in the park by far. Uh, Mindbuster had been, in its early days, a very popular ride, and over time it's uh, been reprofiled and just is the Frankenstein of this park, whereas World of Beast is pretty much intact. Over a couple of interesting notes for this year, now the re reprofiling happened recently. I can't find the exact date off the top of my head, but uh, just before the final turn, there's a airtime hill that has now got a 45 degree almost angle to a banking uh, before you actually hit the turnaround. So that's a nice little effect they've added to the ride over the years. Also to note as well, this year, brand new to the cars, extra cushing on the padding and also brand new lap restraints. The typical, they've had them before, but they have uh, brand new orange restraints. Obviously, they've invested in this coaster, which to me says that those that are uh, going to speculate if this is going to be an RMC at any point in the near future, I would say that's probably not the case. Also, the name retrain change as well. So, not thinking that Wildebeest is under threat. So let it be permanently known that even though this ride was supposed to have a name change, it is now going to officially apparently be Vortex from now on because the sign, the original Vortex sign, which I honestly would love in my own personal collection, if it was for sale, I would buy it. Uh, it's a special place in my heart. It's my first favorite coaster here at Wonderland as far as it being groundbreaking, at least for Canada at the time. But yeah, new sign. So obviously they've themed it according to Frontier Canada, just showed you a sign there of the new sign leading into this Vortex section. And we have, of course, Yukon Striker right behind us over here. Um, it is testing. I'm sure there's a lot of people over there. I haven't even bothered to go over there yet because I just know that there's gonna be either a big line uh, anticipating it opening or you just can't get in line for it at all. So I'm gonna wait and hope uh, given the conditions today whether or not they open it but during the preview they had similar conditions so I'm pretty sure it should open I'm gonna go on Vortex now while we wait okay so here we are Vortex waiting for our train to come uh, this used to be my favorite ride in this park and starting the season in the front row which is gonna be pretty sweet and also uh, gonna get a unique perspective of Yukon Striker uh, going around the main drop as well which should be pretty interesting uh, so yeah, the paint job with this car now definitely falls in line. It's a mine car type of facade that is just similar, too similar to the sign for me to think that sign is not permanent. Vortex is here as a name for this ride for the permanent future, it looks like. Uh, and now I'm just going to go and enjoy my front car ride on it now. Just finished up on Vortex. Not much to say other than smooth, very smooth, like surprisingly smooth. Um, I wasn't able to get on it during Halloween Haunt last year, nor Leviathan. I'm gonna talk about Leviathan a bit later in, my, in relation to Fury 325, but uh, yeah, Vortex is running great. Very happy with it. Um, they're running full two train service on it right now, three trains on Leviathan, and they've got three trains on Yukon Striker Q as well. They're obviously training everybody to run at full capacity today, uh, which is great. So if you're thinking about coming to this next year, I would highly 
uh, recommend it. Obviously, the weather is playing a part in today because it's, it's supposed to rain, 60% showers. We've had intermittent showers, but it's kind of the perfect temperature if you want to use a park that's not too busy because uh, it's basically a train away from a walk on from everything today. Just like that, I'm passing on the offer of Lumberjack because uh, there's about 12 team members there. Uh, they're trying, they've sent all clear on a load four times and it still hasn't dispatched. In fact, it hasn't dispatched at all. So, Lime's just growing. So, I'm going through this new area of Frontier Canada uh, as my uh, facial expression clearly indicates. But uh, here we go. There is a bit of a change. This Whitewater Canyon is currently blocked off, not open for the season quite yet behind me, which makes sense. It's not quite that time of year yet. You can't get anywhere back there actually right now. This is the path leading to Yukon Striker. You're gonna get a couple of good shots of the action here. Fortunately, the service, I've only seen three or four trains go, so it is not running too quickly. Whether or not I'm gonna get on it today is debatable, but we'll see. One thing that I remember when Timberwolf Falls opened in, I believe, if I'm testing myself, 1990, that uh, the smell of the fresh pine just resonated with me uh, throughout the fresh timber, just that scent of fresh wood. And just behind me, we've got some fresh woodwork done on the construction of the underrun. So, uh, some pretty significant work done. I'm gonna wait until the families clear out later to actually ride the ride, uh, but it's looking like it's got a refresh, and again, another ride that looks like it's gonna be here for a while. So I'm getting on to Mindbuster, and I'm gonna update on that, because uh, it'll be interesting to see if any work has been done on that structure, or trains, because uh, that might indicate where it's going in the future. seems to be some concern about this ride running slow. It is not running slow and for my impressions. We also seem to be riding, uh, dispatching one train with passengers and one train without. Uh, we're getting close to the area where the line is. It looks pretty massive. It doesn't look positive for me getting on the ride today. I'm not desperate to ride at first, uh, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's your Yukon Striker lineup. I'm actually gonna go ride Mindbuster and then I'm gonna have a little closer look at what's going on over there. The entire station area and cattle pen is full and the line is now spilled out all the way over past coasters and uh, into the former International Festival area. Uh, so yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm going to be riding it today. I'll literally wait it out to the last ride of the night. But uh, two hours in the cold, waiting for the ride. Like I said, I can wait. Uh, they can get the gremlins out of the way. I have free time. I can come back in a couple of weeks and ride it in the midweek and walk on, I'm sure of it. So uh, we'll keep you up to date on what happens here today. I don't think they're going to get all these people on this ride today. In fact, uh, I think these people are very optimistic because they could just as easily, the park is only open for about two more, two and a half more hours. I heard it was a two hour quote uh, on the wait, but realistically, 
we've got a train that has not dispatched for about 10 minutes just waiting there. The last one was empty. If they continue with this operation for the day, there's no chance that they're going to get all these people on this ride today. So uh, I would be smart about these things and just wait it out. Mindbuster is now on a pretty okay, significant go wait as well. Uh, I think because of the amount of people that have just decided to bail on this ride. Um, it is what it is, it's a brand new coaster. Um, it is revolutionary for Wonderland to have a coaster of this size opening with as many records as it has for its type, so I'm not going to fault anything. It is what it is. Although having ridden Baron uh, 1898 just at the end of this past year, so yeah, uh, in early or late December in minus three degree temperature, I cannot say that the cold is at fault, so they gotta figure that out. I'm also sadly walking in the former presence of what was, as far as I was called, always known it as, So Loco. And it looks like this circular pad here that we have is the former original concrete pad for where the ride was located and the stand the entranceway and everything is right behind me here. Kind of disappointed what they've done with this area. I thought they would have done something else, but uh, maybe there is something planned for the future for how they're gonna make it work out. Obviously, this would be a good spot for a new flat ride, but they just cut a path right through the available space. So uh, what they have planned for us is high near, I'm not really sure, but I'm sure they got something planned. We'll see over the ensuing years what it is. Although it might have something to do with that right there. So Behemoth is also on kind of like a wishy-washy way. It was uh, stuck on the lift hill for the most part of the uh, start of the day when I got here for like a half an hour. We got some fans right behind us here. They're going to probably go on the ride. Um, so at the end of the day, it's probably like a half an hour. I'm probably not going to bother going on that either because like I said, in two weeks time, I'm gonna be, it is a Friday night for those people that don't know what's going on with Wonderland right now. So it's a Friday night. They're not actually open this weekend, but they usually have like private event buyout weekends on the weekend before they open, which is what I presume is going on. Uh, I hope they got uh, most of the operations sorted out by them because people are kind of scrambling around trying to find attractions on this side of the park that are actually open and there's not many. So uh, let's see what I can get on.